Hey there friends, welcome to another episode of Lemonade Workouts. So today we are doing a back and shoulder workout. One of my second favorite training days after leg day, of course. Right now I'm just getting started warming up. You saw the first episode of the series, you know that for my warm ups. I personally prefer to get my heart rate slightly up and get, get the juices flowing with a little bit of light cardio. Since I am doing an upper body workout, I wanted to do some cardio that incorporated my upper body. And for me, the elliptical always does that. Something that I like to do on the the elliptical to track my um I guess to track how hard I'm going. I don't pay attention to the calories or the heart rate. That stuff is not typically accurate on these exercise machines. When I'm on the elliptical, what I pay attention to is strides per minute. For me, fast is above 150 to 160 strides per minute, depending on my resistance. That's all I'm doing right now. There's not much else to say. The elliptical is a very self-explanatory machine. Most gyms have one. So yeah, I'm gonna be on here for, I believe about 15 minutes before we jump in. Is any back or pull day complete without some variation of lat pull down? I don't think it is. <laughs> so getting into my workout, I'm doing a single arm variation of a lat pull down here. Uh, this is a unilateral version. Uni means one because I'm doing one side at a time. I'm using a D handle attachment, but you can use any handle attachment that you have available to you. Something to keep in mind with these is maintaining stability throughout the movement. To do this, you may see me grab on to something like the lat pad or the tower occasionally you don't ever want to let your body flail around while you're slinging the weight every which way. That advice can go for every single exercise that you're ever doing in your whole life. After you grip the handle, using your lat, exhale as you slowly pull the handle down toward that side, contract for one to two seconds, then inhale as you slowly release back up. Do not let the weight yank your arm back up, stay in control, slowly release your arm back up. This may sound kind of weird and counterintuitive, but you really must relax when you do these because you want to get a good range of motion. And if you're letting your body tense up just to move the weight, which also may mean you're using too much weight by the way, but it could also prevent you from allowing your arm and thus your lat to fully extend during the eccentric contraction, which is when you're releasing your arm back up, and this can really limit your range of motion. So in terms of seating options, I am seated so that my body is fully facing the machine, but you can also sit so that only one leg is secured under the hip pad and the working side is facing the machine. So basically kind of sitting to the side, that's an option as well. If you maybe feel like sitting completely facing the machine as I am is not tickling your lat as much as you feel like it could be. Next up, we have another favorite of mine for back day, the seated close grip row. So I was having some, um, I guess, mechanical difficulties. The right clips to attach to the cable had mysteriously gone missing, which is not unusual in this gym setting. So I had to work with holding the handle at a slightly weird angle, but don't worry. I survived. So I personally love both a close grip and a wide grip row. In my opinion, neither is necessarily better than the other. They both work most of the major muscles in your back and are excellent for strengthening your overall core and improving your stability. A difference though is that the wide grip row puts a little bit more emphasis on the muscles of your upper back area, such as your trapezius or your traps. So when you're doing a wide grip row, you may feel it a little bit more kind of closer to um, like the base of your neck, that area. In terms of safety and execution, it's important to not allow your back to round out excessively when you're using heavier weight with these. As you inhale and pull the weight towards your sternum, keep your back straight and your chest up. 
then exhale as you slowly return the weight down. As you return to the starting position, it's okay to allow the handle to slowly pull your arms forward so you can fully extend your arms and your lats, but slow is the operative term here. Do not let the weight jerk you forward and then slam down because you could get yourself injured that way. Now moving on to some of my other favorite upper body machines. This is the lateral deltoid raise machine. This is a bent arm variation. So from my own personal experience, this machine may or may not be in your local gym. I feel like it's somewhat specific and kind of unique. I have not seen it in every gym I've been in in my entire life. And I have been in a lot of gyms, believe me. If you wanna try these out, but don't have the machine, you can absolutely do this with dumbbells. The execution using dumbbells is exactly the same as you see me here using the machine. Holding a dumbbell in each hand, bend your arms at 90 degrees, then slowly raise your arms up so your upper arms are parallel to the floor and your upper body is kind of in a T-shape, the same as you would if you were doing a straight arm lateral raise, and then slowly lower the weight back down. So there is a slight difference in the bent arm variation versus the standard arms fully extended variation. They both work your medial or lateral deltoid, but mechanically the standard straight arm version is actually more difficult. The reason is because when your arms are fully extended, albeit with a slight bend in the elbow, this puts more stress on the joints, the elbow and the shoulder. When you bend your arm, there is less stress on the joints and you may even find that you can lift a little heavier weight with your arms bent. A really good analogy that I've heard before from other personal trainers is if you think of your arms like a lever, with the arms fully extended, the lever is longer and there's more stress at each joint because of this length. With the arms bent, the lever is shorter and that means less stress on those same joints. Personally, as somebody with mild bursitis in my shoulders and because I have very long limbs, the bent arm variation of the lateral raise is actually more comfortable for me. So if you've never tried the bent arm variation before, why not give it a try? I recommend starting with lighter weight and seeing how it feels. last exercise of the day, some rear delts, um, upper back emphasis here, incline rear delt raises. I really love doing these with the support of an incline bench. Doing them against a bench allows you to just focus on the lift and focus on actually using your rear delts and other associated muscles you would use with these, such as your traps. If you tried a bench over raise before and found it sort of cumbersome and difficult, I'd recommend giving it a try with an incline bench to allow you to help stabilize your upper body. Another recommendation I have, which is my recommendation for all exercises that are very shoulder dominant, by the way, do not use excessively heavy weight. Your shoulders are a small muscle and they don't need a lot of weight to be challenged because of their size and because of the joint. It also puts them at a higher risk of injury if you're slinging heavy weight around. Also, when you do these, an important safety bit is to make sure your arms are not pinned straight. Do not lock out your elbows. When you lock out your elbows, it puts a lot of stress and strain on the elbow joint. So you want to maintain a slight bend in your elbow at all times as you do these. You can see me doing that here. So it's time to cool down, arguably one of my favorite parts of the workout. I love a good stretch after I work out. Um, this is something that I incorporate into my fitness routine. Um, stretching and flexibility and mobility are equally as important as strength in my opinion. And I like saving it for last because it just, you know, slows my heart rate down, calms my body, calms my mind because I incorporate yoga. Right now what I'm doing is I'm actually doing some um, running stretches. I don't consider myself a runner <laughs> per se, but um, these foot stretches feel really, really amazing. There's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to my stretches. I'm just going to show myself here doing a couple minutes of my stretching routine, maybe give you some ideas if you're not quite sure what you want to do. If you're not up to my level of flexibility, that's okay. If you are more flexible than me, that is also okay. I've been doing hot yoga on and off for many years. I haven't found a good studio where we live now, so I, I've only been to one studio and I just, I didn't love it because it was too crowded. 
Um, but even if I don't go to an actual studio to do my yoga, I always incorporate it myself into my um, fitness routine. On top of some just typical stretching, I'm also doing some yoga, something that I always do. And I'll show a brief clip of it in a second is I work on my stability and core strength by working on my headstand. Again, if you're not up to my level, no worries at all. My goal is to work my way up to forearm stand and then eventually a full handstand. A workout's done. You know what I want? I want a clean juice. So we're gonna order a clean juice. This one's my favorite. The wake up one. Ginger, lemon, and orange. God damn, these are so expensive. <laughs> no, I don't want any of your add-ons. I just picked up my clean juice, obviously. This whole shopping center that I am currently in is new to the city that I live in. There is a clean juice, which I frequent, and then right next to it, a clean juice, which is a cycle bar opening up. And I'm super excited because I actually already have a membership. Um, I got in on their like founders membership. They're not open yet. It's still like under construction. Lifetime unlimited uh, rides for $99 a month. Anyway, that's besides the point. I'm looking and two doors down from clean juice is an IV hydration and wellness place. Like, you know, one of those places where they do like, like nutrient IVs, like vitamin IVs and stuff, like that Gwyneth Paltrow crap. How long has that been here? It doesn't look like it's open yet. The windows and the doors look pretty barren. All I see is the sign at the top of the building. Mm hmm. Those freaking IV vitamin places are popping up all over the place. And in my opinion, they are a complete waste of money. I don't know, I just feel like that's something that people do when they have too much money. <laughs> and are obsessed with being, with what they perceive as being healthy. I say as I drink my clean juice. I like clean juice because it just tastes good. That's why I like it. Okay, let's go home. Zeus, you wanna go outside? Go outside with your brother and sissy. There's Alpha. <laughs> it's wet outside today, so she's like probably already done. Hey baby, what's up? What? I'm home. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> Onyx, what's up, dog? <laughs> Onyx, get him. She's up here screaming for no reason. What, Alpha? <laughs> Bye. Bye.